Hello and welcome back to my Factorio 1.0 tutorial Let's Play series. I'm Exterminator and thank you for joining me again. Uh, we are ready this episode to hopefully get to yellow high-tech science. Uh, so just before I started the recording here, uh, we actually finished the research for the science pack itself. Uh, and then of course all the prerequisites for that, uh, which means we have a few things we need to set up before we actually build the remaining uh, two ingredients for the pack uh, because the two remaining things are electric engine units and also low density structures now we do have everything we needed for low density structures um, but the engine units go into the flying robot frames uh, which we have everything for except batteries and then of course the engines which need lubricant there and lubricant is something we've not made yet and that's because it's actually made from heavy oil which is also something we've not actually produce yet because from uh, basic oil processing which is what we've been on this entire time it just produces petroleum gas uh, however advanced oil processing does give us the ability to produce heavy oil and light oil uh, and that is something we unlocked uh, way up here in order to get to the science pack so it did kind of just guide us that way luckily it was a requirement and i've preset this up so i've run water here uh, and then I've also set up some tanks uh, here prepared to accept the new liquids. So what we can do at this point, uh, when you guys go to switch, you can do it pretty much like this. Uh, you can just go in here and you can now change this. So now we have advanced oil processing. And uh, instead of taking just crude oil and giving us just petroleum, this takes in now crude oil as well as water. And it still does give us petroleum. Um, it actually gives us a little more petroleum. Uh, and then it also gives us light oil and heavy oil now you can see uh, 45 light oil and 25 heavy oil so if i select this i'm just going to copy and paste this over and uh, i accidentally disconnected a uh, power pole here um, if you shift click on a power pole it will actually disconnect the wire as you can see like that i just did that on purpose to show you um, this can be useful in some cases but that was a complete accident as i was copy pasting uh, now this, I'm not actually entirely sure what I've done here. Oh, here we go, okay. <laughs> this guy goes like that, there we go. Um, so this is all set up, it's accepting the inputs in the correct slots. Uh, water will always be on this slot and oil will always be on this slot. Same with the outputs, they will always be in these exact same uh, positions once you switch it. Uh, so it's easy, you don't have to move petroleum anywhere, you don't have to move crude anywhere. Uh, and we are now producing this. Uh, so we need to send it somewhere. Let's go ahead and send this to this tank and this one to this tank. Now I've offset them a little bit just so we don't have, if I put this one here, uh, I actually did that initially just because I was trying to set it up quickly. Um, we would have pipes trying to go in the same plane of, of placement basically. And that would uh, of course create some issues. So uh, we have these kind of staggered a little bit. Uh, and there's a few things we can do with these. So the heavy oil, we can make lubricant, which is what we're going to do. Uh, you can also make solid fuel from the heavy oil, uh, which is basically just the next level up, uh, solid fuel is the next level up from coal in terms of its you know, its fuel value and just how long it will burn for and stuff. You can see their fuel value is 12 megajoules up from coal, which I believe is eight, four. So it's actually three times as much uh, fuel value. Uh, lastly, you can actually crack. So this is when we get cracking. Um, and, and what this does is this takes some heavy oil, and this one in particular, takes some heavy oil and some water and then gives us light oil in return. So it's a way to kind of convert one resource into another, which we weren't uh, able to access before. Uh, and then in addition to that, you have light oil cracking to petroleum, which is the same type of process, uh, but instead of taking in heavy oil, it takes in light oil and then it gives us petroleum uh, so this one is the one we're gonna be taking most advantage of. We probably are going to set up a very minimal amount of this, um, but we do want a fair bit of our heavy oil going to lubricant. Uh, so let's go ahead and set that up initially here. I think since lubricant is something we're gonna need farther down the line, I am actually going to run this uh, over here. I could have set these up more this way, probably would have been a decent idea, but uh, we're gonna just set this up here. And it's very simple, lubricant is Probably actually the simplest, aside what well, really actually it is just the simplest uh, oil product out of everything uh, because it just requires the input of heavy oil 
and nothing else, no solids, no other liquids, and it just simply gives you out petroleum, or sorry, lubricant. And a one-to-one ratio as well, 10 heavy oil to 10 lubricant. And uh, this is something we are going to want to put in a tank. Uh, so I'll go ahead and throw a tank down right here. I'm actually going to connect it directly to this. And um, there's actually, before that fills up, made a little mistake. So we're going to take advantage of the circuit network here. Uh, I, I changed my mind because, uh, well, I could just have this fill up a tank of uh, lubricant, but I think I think this is actually a good time to take advantage of the circuit network and show you guys some more things you can do with that. So I showed you some things with inserters. We're going to a very going to do a very very similar thing, but with liquids. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a pump this time. Uh, since obviously liquids don't work with inserters, and we're going to connect a tank to this pump. Uh, now normally, uh, without any conditions or anything, this pump is just going to pump it into the tank as if we had put the tank there like we did initially. However, uh, we can take some wire, and we're going to wire this pump to the tank. And what this does, just like we do inserters, so we take the wire, have it in our hand, we click, and then we click the thing we want to connect it to. You can also disconnect like this, by the way. Um, there's already a wire there, we'll disconnect it to use the same color. Uh, and then now this allows us to have a condition. Enable, disable, that's the only thing we can do here. And much like the inserters for the chests in our hub over there, we're going to do a similar thing here. We're going to limit this and say if petroleum is less than 10,000, this pump will work. Once it hits 10,000, uh, it will stop working and it will back up. And that's, again, this, this in this particular case is not necessary. Uh, it is a little bit helpful because it will allow us to send more things to cracking sooner. Uh, and then uh, I just wanted to show you how this can be done with fluids uh, very much just the same as inserters with boxes. Uh, now, there are, you know, there, there are many ways you could do this. We could have set this up on the cracking side of things. Uh, you know, we could say only crack this uh, if lubricant. So why don't we set this up really quick and I'll just show you. Um, I think we do want to need to set up some cracking. I don't know that we really need to have a go quite at the moment, but I suppose we could do that just in case. Um, so we go in here. This is going to require water. So let's get our water run. Uh, we may actually change this condition here a little bit, the more that I'm thinking about it. Uh, because what we can do is we can actually turn, basically, almost turn on and off this cracking machine uh, based on a lubricant amount. So instead of having this hooked up here, what we could do is have it uh, hooked up, well, we could either put a pump on the front end here for the heavy oil input or on the um, output here for the light oil and have the pump based on the same exact condition. So it's actually really controlling the cracking directly based on the amount of petroleum we have. Uh, and it will kind of just regulate how much is going uh, to which thing. Um, this will do it just not as cleanly necessarily because it will fill up and then it will eventually back up and then the rest will go to here. Um, so it kind of does the same thing. The second, the, the way where you work directly with the cracking is uh, quote unquote cleaner it's it's a bit smoother uh, but uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to set up some cracking for uh, light oil to petroleum now there are ratios for all this uh, I think for the sake of time and not throwing too much information at you at once I'm not going to cover those ratios in this episode uh, I think uh, I'm going to line that up it's a little bit of a waste but uh, we can cover those in a future episode. For now, I'm just going to set up four, uh, which is, I think, fairly close to the ratio. Uh, it's de definitely not exact by any means. But um, uh, we, we are going to uh, cover those. But I think for now, I would just like to get the yellow science working. And oh my goodness, hello. <laughs> oh my goodness, this was a... I heard this noise and I like got a little scared and didn't see them there for a minute. I ran, I, I, I thought it was this way for some reason. Um, wow, where did those guys come from? That was, that was crazy. Perhaps right here, be my guess. There looks like there's maybe bases up here as well, which does bode poorly for this outpost, but my guess would be right here is probably where that is coming from. 
We are having a lot of expansion um, coming towards our base. I think we really need to start uh, being very aggressive with our uh, Biter clearing or potentially even set up uh, a huge wall, although that's a massive endeavor, or maybe setting up some kind of defense bunkers on the main paths of attack because uh, these attacks are becoming uh, you know, more and more frequent. Uh, okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to power this right now and continue setting this up as we were. Uh, we're just going to run this here. Now we could just make this a solid pipe, but I may want to want run through here, so I'm just going to do it this way. Uh, go ahead and connect up the water like this. Oop. Looks like something somewhere is being attacked. Uh, I'd like to just finish this here really quick, see what's going on here. Uh, so this ran out of ammo. Um, they are going to get destroyed, the biters. So we'll have to go take care of that. That was uh, my mistake, running out of ammo there. Uh, now these are producing petroleum. So we've we've taken water and light oil, and we are now getting petroleum from that. Uh, and we do this because if we don't, then what will happen is the tank will back up, and it will actually halt all other production. Oh dear, did this other one die too? Oh no. Um, it'll halt all other production uh, in this system, because if this backs up, it can't output it, which means this isn't, it's going to turn off the entire, uh, production here, and then, then nothing will work, um, because obviously then we won't be making any more petroleum or anything like that, so, uh, this is why it is important to crack or turn it into solid fuel, whatever you would like to do, um, uh, maybe whatever your needs are, solid fuel, uh, can be quite good if you're, like, going very, very heavy, uh, steam power, and maybe have a very, uh, Poor coal patch and lack of coal. This can be quite good. Um, so what we're going to do here. This is a little bit wonky the way I've uh, done this. When we add more refineries. We may have to rework this uh, line a little bit. But uh, for simplicity sake right now. Uh, we're going to kind of just bring this down here. And then this one. We can actually. I think I'm just going to run a solid pipe through here. Uh, now these... Again, much like pump jacks and stuff, all these buildings have um, essentially built-in uh, like pumps. So like, even though this connects to here, which may be pumping out, um, these are also going to be essentially pumping it out into this pipe. So it will all flow to here. Now this is backed up, of course, so uh, this is not necessary uh, at the moment to even have this, but uh, it's there if we need it to be. When we need it to be, we will need it to be. Uh, without question. Uh, so this is a little messy. Like I said, oil's not going to be perfect. This is actually, believe it or not, one of my cleaner setups. Um, so we now have petroleum uh, coming through here. We now have lubricant here. We have heavy oil here. Looks like the biters have made it past our other turret there, so we're going to have to go uh, deal with that here shortly. Let me, at the very least, get this run over this way. Oh, not do that. Um, and then... Uh, then we're going to work on electric engines. Now, electric engines are quite simple because uh, they take engines, which we already know how to make. We're already making somewhere else in the base. Uh, I think we will make them again, though. We're not going to pull from the setup we already have because that's mostly dedicated and ratioed to the uh, blue science that it's made for. Um, so we don't really want to be pulling off of that. Uh, so we're going to make them again, but it's very, you know, very simple, straightforward. Uh, and then... Uh, circuits, which of course we already have on the bus, and then lubricant, which we did um, just make. So that's going to be very simple as well. Uh, it looks like we really need some heavy defense out here. I think I need to spend uh, a fair bit of time, um, fair bit of time here with uh, clearing out enemies. We have, <clears throat> we're getting attacks from quite a few different angles at this point. Uh, so, uh, walling these, do we have wall on us at the moment? We don't. We should go pick some up. Because uh, walling these in will help massively, as we did here. You can see the turret is surviving for quite a while there, whereas these are getting destroyed. Uh, there's just so many, there's so many different things to focus on in the factory. It can be, can be very easy to, uh, you know, switch from one thing to the other and kind of lose track of what you're doing. Uh, you can also see we are having some very, very significant copper supply issue. So actually, while we're up here, uh, let's add in some more copper mining. That is the issue. You can see that the 
few furnaces we do have while this setup is uh, small and could definitely be expanded, the ones that we even have there to begin with aren't actually running. Uh, all of them aren't running uh, because we have that lack of ore. So adding more at that point would not really accomplish anything uh, since we can't even supply the ones that we do have. And let's just do that. And we can place these here. I do need to remember to place back down that turret though so that we don't have any more minor casualties and we'll connect that up. So I added a few more miners. It's not a lot, but it will help. Uh, and then I am going to perhaps add a few more furnaces here while we are in the area. Looks like four is a decent amount here before we need to change how this belt is turned or it's where it's turned rather. We'll just get this built here really quick so we can move on to working on the uh, the things for our science. Uh, and the ore still may not make it down here. I don't know that I upgraded it enough, but if it does, then the smelters are there uh, in case it does get to that point. <clears throat> uh, so now, looking at the electric engines, like I said, they're going to be very simple. In fact, what we can do uh, while we don't have robots quite yet, um, just to make the placing of things a bit easier, um, I'm going to take the copy paste tool with control C, and I'm actually going to just directly copy. Um, what am I going to copy here? I think I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy, uh, how much of this do we want to copy? I think we're going to copy this part. Uh, the way I'm going to do it, I don't want that belt on the right there, and I need to get rid of the longhand inserters, but just removing those few things is probably easier than uh, copying that build by hand. So uh, we have the blue circuits, which we haven't sent anywhere quite yet, uh, and we're going to take this and line it up with, it seems like something's got a little out of line here. I think the blue circuits, I, they, they got thrown off there a little bit. Uh, we're going to do that. <clears throat> excuse me that okay so let's get rid of these long head inserters because uh, what's gonna happen is this is actually going to be an input belt now on this left side here uh, this one's still gonna be pipes uh, or it could be it could be steel and gears as well but we'll just make it pipes uh, and then uh, we, we really could have just flipped these I suppose And we can like we can redo the power pulls as well here, uh, because um, what we're gonna want to do is I'm actually going to uh, I'm going to have these directly insert into the electric engine machines uh, rather than belting them and then you know just kind of turning them around right away. Uh, we're going to just directly insert and uh, let's take a really quick look here at a ratio just to see how many of these we may need. Uh, a robot frame takes 20 seconds and it requires one electric engine unit. Uh, and if we take a look here, this requires one robot frame uh, essentially every seven seconds. Um, well, one every 21 seconds. Um, and then it so it's the same craft time and same output as the purple science. So 21 seconds and three output three science output. So we're go I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm going a little fast. We're going to have uh, we're going to have seven machines, I believe, making this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. We're gonna have seven making this to get a one a second, same as this. Um, which means we need seven every twenty one seconds. My bad. Uh, which means one every three seconds of of, of the uh, flying robot frames. One every three seconds. Uh, which means that we need probably about uh really that's quite a bit we actually need i believe we need about seven because six of these i think six times three is 18 if we did 20 of these that'd be one a second a third of that is roughly seven so we need about seven of these seven of these guys here, which means we need seven electric engine units 
every 20 seconds or about one every three seconds. And these take 10 seconds. Uh, I say we really only need like maybe three or four of these. I know that probably got convoluted. Um, there was a lot of rounding is <laughs> I kind of just rounded in multiple places there because nothing was actually exact. And sometimes that's what you'll have to do. Um, or I mean, you can try to be as exact as possible, but again, you can't have um, partials of machines. Uh, so I think that uh, we should be fine. We could do, just because we may want some electric engines for other things, we can actually just get away with five of these. It's possible I completely miscalculated the ratios, um, but we'll see. Uh, so actually, at this point, I am going to just uh, remove this section. That is not really required. Okay, so we're going to directly insert this now at this point, and we're going to have lubricant come in here, and then we're going to have to, of course, have uh, have this output somewhere. So it's going to be very much like this build here, uh, except of course instead of acid, we have lubricant um, coming in. So I want to take. We can actually have the iron come in right here conveniently. Uh, let's have these guys pull from right there. Uh, get some power preset up. This can just come right in the middle here. Nice and easy. And we'll take some pipes. And these need to come out just one, luckily. Have this come this way. And we could have reversed it. We could have had like the engines be here and electric engines be here. Uh, but since we are going to be building down this way as we progress towards the science, um, it made sense to have them here. Uh, so we're going to have this be the output, of course. And since we don't really need electric engines for much else, uh, they do go into power armor later on and stuff like that. But that's not like it's not something we really need on the bus. Uh, you know, that's something we can just come by and kind of hoover off the belt, if you will. Um, so uh, we're just going to run them down that way directly to the robot frames. That's going to be... Uh, probably the biggest consumer of them by quite a large margin. Uh, so we're going to just take this guy and move him forward one there. And it looks like things are a little bit wonky with how this is going to go, but let's see what we can do here. Uh, the iron, this iron I think is actually, is this the last? Oh no, there's copper by this as well. Okay, so we're losing a lot of our stuff over here. Quite annoying. <laughs> at, th at this point, uh, I think I'd really just almost need a wall in my whole base because it, I put turrets down and they do seem to find their way around the turrets. Uh, I really don't want to run all the way up there and all the way back, so I'm just going to let them kill whatever they want to kill. Um, it may seem like a bad idea to do such a thing, uh, but primarily what they're killing right now is some belt, maybe a few miners and some power poles. It's all very easily replaceable. And uh, I, I don't want to waste the time to run up there and then all the way back down here uh, just a minute later. So uh, we're going to just continue on our way here towards what we want to do. Uh, now with this being, with the gear line being closer, we really probably should have split it off first. But this does work. Uh, so this is going to be all set up once we send a power line over. Uh, and then this will grab here, this will grab here. These guys are going to output. And we, at this point, just need some lubricant. After I actually get this turned on, I will go deal with whatever they have destroyed. And now, if we were, of course, closer in our base, and I know this is probably uh, making a lot of people very uncomfortable, uh, knowing that all this stuff is being destroyed, uh, and, and I apologize for that, but uh, I really do think it's a fairly big waste of time to run all the way up there and then run all the way back down even even though i'm heading in that general direction right now i mean i suppose we're halfway this is a this is a nice coincidence i guess that i'm going to the mall the hub anyway here uh yeah again it looks it's very you know it can be very panic inducing um because you see all these destroyed alerts and it seems like you know your entire base is dying but really a lot of it is just belts uh which you know Sure, they destroyed a lot of them, but in the grand scheme, they're quite cheap, very easy to replace. Uh, I mean, they destroyed a couple miners, but it's really nothing that 
huge. Uh, so, you know, this can be very, very easily replaced. In fact, in fact, that one just didn't have ore anyway, so we would have needed to take that one off of there. Uh, let's connect that up if we had one. Uh, so they did destroy our balancer, which is slightly annoying, granted, uh, but again, not particularly hard to fix. And now we'll connect that up. Everything should be good to go there. Uh, I'm going to make the last turret I can make. I'm almost out of iron. And uh, we will put a turret here. I think maybe one over here would have actually been equally beneficial. Uh, looks like we're also losing what we just built, so... <laughs> Uh, we are being pulled in many different directions at this point, folks. Uh, now this one, I'm going to hoof it because we are... This looks like a very large attack and uh, we're losing a lot of what we just built, which is quite frustrating. This is definitely more than belts. Um, I'm guessing it's probably another volley of spitters if I, if I had to take a guess here at what's destroying all of our stuff. Uh, so, I think what I'm going to do between this episode and next episode is I'm going to go clear out a bunch of biters, and then I'm going to um, I'm going to clear out a bunch of biters, and then uh, we're probably going to set up some sort of defensive perimeter. It looks like, yes, it is a huge volley of spitters. Uh, there's not a ton of them, but they do a very, very large amount of damage, um, as you can see. So they've destroyed basically everything we just built, which is, uh, well, as you might imagine, quite frustrating. Uh, but now, uh, and unfortunately, we don't have, I don't think we have blueprints unlocked yet, so uh, there's no ghost prints with this, which does make things uh, more difficult to, um, ouch, more difficult to rebuild. Uh, I think, oh, that inserter was there, I suppose, do something like that, okay. Yes, so, very, very frustrating. All right, uh, we'll fix this guy up here. I mean, it's not the huge, like the biggest, biggest deal, but you know, a setback like that is a bit annoying to, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, we are losing something somewhere else too. Uh, we are really just being thrown all over the place. Uh, are there turrets? I did not put turrets here, did I? Oh well. I'm going to fix this first and place some turrets down here while we have a moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and do this. The biters are suddenly getting very angry. Uh, maybe I've <laughs> maybe I've gotten to a point where they they say enough. No, they they've had enough of our uh, our polluting of their world, and they're coming after us at this point. Uh, right. Okay. So that goes there. Um, I want to get this running again, if at all possible. That'd be very nice. Uh, this one needs to be pipe. Swoop. And I think that should be good. We have those turrets there. I'm just going to connect this really quickly. And then we need to see where does this actually... Actually goes like here. We are, of course, losing a somewhat substantial amount of things, but... Mostly belt. Again, not that big of a deal. So had we not been interrupted, uh, we would have actually gotten very, very far towards... Oops. <laughs> Panicking now, having the whole... Uh, the, the wrong fluid here. However, uh, we can take advantage of the flushing feature and clean that out very nicely without a problem. Uh, this one probably wouldn't hurt to run down here, but we actually need the lubricant. Uh, it looks like they've managed to kill a power pull to <laughs> disconnect our entire base. I know it seems like everything is going up in flames. Uh, again, though, there's no need to panic. Um, one power pull, some belts. Very easy to fix. Uh, it will power back up our entire base here once I do get things reconnected up there. Okay, so that will work, uh, of course, once we regain power. 
Uh, and we probably do want to, let me just see here. Uh, we want to unlock construction robotics. I believe this will then give us the uh, ability to have ghost prints when things are destroyed. We obviously could build ghost prints from the beginning. Uh, however, uh, once you unlock this research, I believe it is, uh, when things die, they leave a ghost print behind for robots to rebuild, or even if the player just rebuilds them, it makes it a lot easier to rebuild because you can see exactly where everything was before it got destroyed. Whereas, as you saw with our electric engine area, uh, they, you know, you, you saw the rubble, but that was not super indicative of exactly uh, where things were. Uh, okay, so we are being attacked from multiple different angles. But, like I said, very, very easy to fix. It looks like our base is powered back on, hopefully. Yep, everything's good to go there. Make sure we get this reconnected. Get this reconnected here. And probably want to build a turret or two here. So they managed to sneak past. Uh, really, they could have only just come through here. Because uh, I am quite confident that this is not connected. It looks like there's a diagonal here, but I don't think that's actually walkable. We have to physically go down there and take a look, I suppose, to see. Uh, maybe just do that. We actually lost a radar oh. as well. Uh, we don't have a bunch of ammo, unfortunately. We'll have to go restock, but that should protect it there at least for a bit. It wasn't a huge attack. Uh, the spitters, though, the spitters can be very, very dangerous, even in low numbers, uh, as we've seen multiple examples of. Uh, I think also it would be advantageous to place a radar down at this end. Uh, I don't think that's actually covered by active radar. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab some more ammunition here. And let's go investigate what we can do. I think I'm going to finish. I'm going to set up robot frames and then we'll probably, unfortunately, have to call an episode at that point. Uh, I do believe we could have finished Yellow Science uh, if it weren't for, for those meddling biters. So saying may go. So uh, these guys are, of course, missing this, which they're missing that. Uh, oh, these are missing circuits, right? Um, so we can do something interesting here. I've not actually done this before, uh, but I think it would. I think it would be an interesting experiment. Um, we can do very much what we did with. Uh, what we did with the steel build um well we're actually utilizing half of this belt for one for the input and then the other half for output i've never actually done this before with electric engines uh but i don't really see a reason why it wouldn't work they do require a pretty low amount of electronic circuits uh so i think half of a belt would certainly be sufficient and then of course they are only going to output on one half of the belt uh anyway due to the mechanics of inserters um, so I think that uh, doing this will actually work. The only uh, little tricky bit here is we're going to need to, uh, let's actually, let's pull this up a little bit, redesign this slightly. Uh, we actually just need to make sure we side load here. <clears throat> so if we come over here like this, something like that. There we go. Okay, so, you know, not the most elegant, but what this will do is it will give us the green circuits that we need. Uh, and then it will start to work, theoretically. And this one is not getting engines. I forgot to replace that inserter. And, of course, these that did have the engines are now working, and they will output on this side of the belt. And all that's left to do at this point... Uh, this actually works fantastic. Better than I even anticipated. This was a very happy accident, if you will. Uh, because robot frames conveniently require green circuits as well. Um, so the green circuits and the electric engines will automatically be on one belt. This may be uh, a strategy I adapt, uh, adapt um, for all my future builds of this, actually. I can't believe I've not done it before now. So we kind of discovered this together. It's pretty cool. Because uh, then all we need is a belt of batteries and steel. And we can work on batteries next episode. So it was a bit ambitious, admittedly, to uh, have the hopes of getting... Yellow Science done this episode, uh, as someone commented in the last episode, I think we are quite close. We really only have um, robot frames and the uh, loads of these structures to make. Uh, now these, I don't 
exactly recall how many of these I needed. Was it three or was it seven? I want to say it was three. Uh, we need seven every, so we need one every three seconds. Mm, or I think we did need seven of these potentially. Yeah, we did need seven. So we just scoot this out a little bit here because um, I do want to leave room for more electric engine production if need be. Uh, and I'm going to probably call the episode right here so I can um, <laughs> go deal with that attack that is probably, I don't know what this is destroying, um, our entire oil production. So we might want to go deal with that. Um, I'm going to call the episode here, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I do apologize for all the distraction with the biters. That is something that really can't be, uh, I mean, it could be avoided, but, you know, I didn't know that that was happening exactly going to happen this episode. Um, but it's a lesson for all of us to make sure to defend well. Um, they do seem to be sneaking in about every area. They have destroyed our tank of heavy oil, which is unfortunate. Luckily, they did not touch the lubricant. Uh, well, lubricant or petroleum in this case. And uh, I believe that will do it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this enjoyable and helpful, uh, despite the uh, biter distractions. Uh, we did discover something cool uh, build-wise together, which is pretty awesome. And uh, if you did find it uh, helpful and enjoyed it, uh, a like is much appreciated, so other people can find it and hopefully find it helpful as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, I encourage you to subscribe to keep up with all the uh, content that's coming out. Until next time, guys, I will see you later, and do take care.